now. Hey. Alright, so uh well we've got one team smoke, team soggy mids. We're gonna get right into it, so let's introduce our teams here on the rating side. We've got a Kunkka being handled by Futsa. He's got that Shadow Blade cosmetic. Unfortunately doesn't have the item yet. Zero can be playing the Timber Saul. Like you said, in the safe lane. We've got Loki going up to top on the Nyx Assassin. Rubik's going to be handled by Kurt Vonnegut. And then finally, uh, the Outhouse Destroyer is going to be played by those little L things. Or boots. Are they boots? What things? I don't know. Just just <laughs> the other team. So, let me find uh, somebody to start with. It will be the Undying. on the er, Played by Cafertado. This is the Brazilian stack, so I might be butchering some of their names. We have Hijack on the Terror Blade in the safe lane. We have Unicello on uh, the Disruptor, also in the safe lane as a support. We have an off lane Trator Tratoreza on the Sand King and a Razor mid with Darwin. Uh, it looks like it'll be a dual off lane with the Sand King and Undying and a dual safe lane coming out of the uh, Terror Blade Disruptor. And you know how I earlier said I would predict the game based on the landing phase? I think Monstro will actually come out ahead with this landing phase and uh, accomplish what they need to do with their timings. Well, we'll see if that's going to happen here. Um, team's about ready to get started. You know, it is a little bit more difficult to kill the heroes when you have uh, heroes like the Undying to help out the Sand King in the offlane. We did talk about how this lane was going to be very difficult for whoever is going to be there. Um, but do you think that this ends up so that the XP is shared among the heroes and they get less levels, which makes them more susceptible to dying? Or do you think that uh, monsters are going to be able to survive with this lane? I think they'll be able to survive. I'm sure they saw the same thing we saw with the fact that any offlaner cannot go solo into the Kunkka and uh, Rubik combo. So they double down with an Undying, get that like safer lane so their offlaner can survive. And the uh, Terror, or Timber, sorry, the Timber Saw came out of the other team as the safe lane carry. And I think that really gimps the, the kill potential that uh, Soggy Mitz was looking for in that safe lane tri lane. So the supports are actually going to roam mid and see if they can do anything to the Razor. But Kunkka is actually just kind of standing there in vision without a Rubik setup, so that won't happen either. Yeah, the Razor knows to be very far fr away from the Kunkka, but what he has to be a little bit more worried about is the Astral Imprison, which at this time is a four-second duration, so it's going to leave a lot of time for the Kunkka to be able to walk right up there. Right. So that means that the Kunkka just goes back over towards bottom. The Timbersaw took a lot of damage from this offlane early, and the Sand King is just using his time to be able to get some levels up, up to level two right now, so he has both the Burrow Strike and the Caustic Finale. Um... Timbersaw's getting a little Sand bit tankier King. right now, though. Even still, though, Sand King is not a hero you want to underestimate, because all of that magic damage, or all the damage he puts out, is magic. And if he gets a level 2 Caustic Finale on all those creeps, doesn't matter how much armor the Timbersaw well, has. the first blood is going to be the... Oh, they're trying to chase him down. Not Zero yet. nearly not taken yet. down. That's going to be the Burrow Strike coming through, and they turn around for the first blood. Now they need to try to take down uh, the Sand King, but now they're being slowed down, and Creep got trying to take down that Torrent. Oh, nice torrent onto the Undying. He took down the Tombstone, and while Undying, he's a little bit low on mana right now, and they nicely turn around that uh, first blood attempt and turn it for their own team. Yeah, like I was saying, you don't want to underestimate that Caustic Finale damage, because even if you have the armor, even if you have the shield, that uh, magic damage bouncing off all the creeps really kind of hits you by surprise when five creeps blow up. Yeah, it can hit you by surprise. It just hit me. That was my that was my slogans in freshman year. <laughs> Alrighty then. Yeah. Well, there's a big creep wave going back towards them. So even after having to go back to base, Sam King's gonna come back and just get a bunch of farm, hit that level three timing, and be able to kind of dominate this lane even harder. Oh yeah, most definitely. And it means that the Undying might not have to spend as much time here anymore. Uh, the supports from Soggy Mints just looking around the map, trying to figure out what to do. I guess the internet problems are going to to continue here for the teams. We've probably almost hit the limit on pause time, to be quite honest. Most likely. Team Sogginess is probably going to pull out the rule book soon. But in the meantime, uh, that top lane does seem to be going in favor of the Terror Blade. Just that high base damage with the threat of Metamorphosis to scare out the Nyx. It's a uh, scary combo. But Kunkka's up there to give him a helping hand. Yep, there's the rule book pull out. And Terror Blade reconnected, so it shouldn't be an issue. 
All right, well, the, the Darwin Razor already at level four right now. It's doing a lot of damage away from the OD. Takes away 31. So OD trying to be a lot main dominator, but it's just so difficult. Really having to use the Astro Prison for the uh, for the CS right now, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, when when the enemy Razor has 90 damage and you have 20, there's not much to there's there's pretty much nothing you can do. Well, except for Astro and Prison. And yeah, that is true. Uh, it's a costly last hit, but it's definitely worth it. Better than nothing. But it's definitely not ideal. Stand strong over at bottom. Getting some nice CS with the Whirling Death. But we'll see if he has to be careful of these heroes at all. Uh, Sand King's putting the Caustic Finale onto the creeps. It's hitting the Timmersaw a little bit, slowing him down. Right here is going to be a kill. Yeah. yeah Timmersaw, he gets Burrow struck. And while well, the Tombstone's going to go down, he uses the Whirling Death. You said it was going to be a kill, but which way? Zero's taking a lot of damage from this, looking for one more Whirling Death. But there's going to be another Burrow Strike available from the Sand King. And that Caustic Finale is going to pop. Not going to be able to get the Whirling Death off. Can Rubik find the kill? Not able to get that last hit off. And now he has to back away. From Cafertado. Can Kuku come in from the backside looking for the torrent? He actually, oh, he doesn't fake that out. He just puts it into the trees. A little bit off the mark there. So, what I saw was I saw five melee creeps all at half health and two range creeps and a Sand King with level three, two caustic finale. And I thought it was just going to be an instant pop. But the Timber saw with a wand and a. I think one of the decays was about to expire, so a little bit of extra health from that did manage to stay alive a little bit longer. But at the end of the day, he dies to the first magic damage from Undying and Sand King. Yeah, like you said, it's definitely easy to uh, underestimate the damage from Caustic Finale. I mean, he's trying to do as much as he can with the Magic Wand, but perhaps he might want to invest into something like a Raindrop or something. Would that help here? A Raindrop does help. A, you know, casual hood, if he can, you know, spare it, would help pretty much anything to to keep that Sand King from dominating as hard and dominate and Sand King dominates with magic damage. So whether that's just stay away from the creeps like he did right there, like he still took 200 damage from the Burrow Strike, but staying away from creeps or just doubling down on the manning up aspect. Maybe pulling out an early hood like the Timbers on the last game did. Yeah, I actually really like that decision in this game as well because this is a really early base lineup from Monstrous and uh, just getting the hood into maybe even the pipe. I mean, I know you do want to go for the bloodstone early, but I, I just think that the timber cell is going to be helped so much by having that extra magic resist. Right, and you know if that slows down the early timing from the oh, there's a DC again. If that slows down the early timing from the uh, Sand King Undying Disruptor Tri Lane or not Tri Lane, but like Tri Hero that only do magic damage. It will uh, really help their team survive that first uh, Terror Blade spike. Sorry about that. Just checking out my, checking out my emails from the girls. Oh, you dog! <laughs> During that time, the Terror Blade was able to reconnect. Hopefully, that the internet um, stays a little bit more stable for him. Notice that the illusions are still DC'd. Yeah. He, he, he's not actually fixing the problem. It looks like he's just, you know, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting to hope that it goes away. You know, maybe some voodoo magic or, as Disruptor says, a bug. We still three minutes, so... So... <laughs> <laughs> you can never tell somebody to calm down and not expect that to urge them on or spur them on further. Yeah, maybe you want to choose different words like calm up. Do you think that would be the opposite of calming down? So that would I'm actually pretty be sure calm. I'm pretty sure that would set me over the edge even further and faster. Calm up. Yeah, someone up. like if I'm if I'm getting upset and somebody's telling me to calm up, just calm up, bro. Calm you know, up. That's like, that actually You're sounds like something me. different. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, this is... Brown Brown knows how I feel right now. Just hit him with the XD. There's not much else to say. I'd hit him with the question mark. I'm that kind of guy. So, how do you... Uh, what's your opinions on these other two lanes that we haven't spent too much time watching, the mid and top lane? How do you think mid's going? Mid's going pretty good for the Razor, even though the OD is a little bit ahead on CS. He's 
Uh, it's still making life a little bit difficult for the OD. It's actually kind of interesting that OD is ahead on CS, even with this game, just because the Razor, maybe it's just putting too much effort into trying to get the static link off. Um, right. You're missing some denies, or you're focusing too much on one thing that you're just not actually getting the CS that you need to stay ahead. Yeah, it should be pretty easy to, you know, get the last hits with the static link, and it should be easy to keep it, the OD down. But the thing is, the recent change to the Astral and Prison, giving it, well, not so recent, but giving it more damage, I guess helps the OD a little bit more in this lane than in he was, just because um, you can still use the Arcane or possibly for last hitting, I, I guess. But not only that, but the Astral in Prison um, is going to be good for clearing out the creep waves. So, I mean, it used to be that Razor just wrecked OD in lane, and they both received a couple of buffs now that make the matchup a little bit different. Right. And with the uh, range drops on this Razor, you know, even when he does get imprisoned, it hurts him a little bit less than it used to, and that actually will make the unstable current about an equal trade if you uh, factor in the range drop damage. So even with, you know, OD's O spamming on his Astral Imprison to win the lane, it doesn't win it as hard as he would like. All right, well, we have reconnected now. And... But terribly to AFK. He's just standing at the creeps. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it just automatic pauses. Oh, it automatically I mean, pauses? Yeah, it automatic pauses in a Torment Lobby. Oh, okay. So now, uh, Capra gets lifted up in the bottom lane. He's super tanky, though, and they might try to go in on this. Um, Timbersalt is going to be putting the salve on himself. Actually, back onto the Sand King. They might be trying to take this one. In fact, one less hit will be able to do it. Now they might try to catch down Capra He's down to 450 health. He's super tanky right now. He'll get the wand and a decay to take down the Rubik. Now he's trying to make his way over to the left side. And Footsie. Well, he'll be trying to catch him out, but just undying is a bit fast for this one. Oh, that's Razor's one thing. a bit low on mid lane as well. One last hit from the OG is going to do it. OG goes to the high ground. Razor goes back towards mid, <laughs> and he's got the juke with the Ironwood branch. He, he Bob Ross. What him. a play. What a play. That's not one you see very often because it does auto repath the OD up, and by the time he realized what just happened, it's too late. Razor's already long gone. Oh, yeah, most definitely. A great play by the Razor. Lots of awareness, knowing exactly where to put that tree. Oh, Courier getting chased down a little bit. Can they be able to take it? The neutral was also helping out a little bit there. But, uh, the Courier stays safe for now. So one thing we didn't mention earlier is the the Timber we saw in the safe lane. Yeah, it doesn't do great against the magic damage, but he is against two strength heroes. So if he gets a single Whirling Death off, that's minus 15% strength, and that's a pretty big chunk of health coming out of both of those heroes. Unfortunately, this game is going to be a little bit affected by this. And we've got the gank going top. Minicello, he's in a lot of trouble. He's being the nice guy, but Sagamis don't really have time for nice guys at all. They'll take him yep. down at top. Unfortunately, this constant DCing from the Terror, uh, terror Blade might be enough just to you know toss him out of the tournament. It's hard to win a 4v5 when your central point of the lineup being your Terror Blade's timing is not playing the game. Yeah, it's... It's really unfortunate, actually, that while we possibly don't see the best matchup from these two teams, uh, definitely want everybody to have a fair fight all the way up to the finals. I mean, you want to have teams being able to say, you know what, we just lost because we weren't good enough, like the new regime yesterday. But uh, some teams just don't have that chance. Right. And uh, one of his teammates is actually just jumping in and microwing the Terrorblade. He understands that likely the Terrorblade is much more important than his own hero at this point, whether it's the Disruptor or the t uh, Undying. But. Yeah, a couple of ganks going on over the map, and an Impale will hit on the Terrorblade. We've got a Timbersaw dying a lot at bottom as well, and but he's got the magic stick, and he'll just get the Timber Chain out away from the Zambies. He's got three Zambies and chasing him, though. Yeah, they heal him up though. With the reactive armor, those zombies don't really hit very hard, and they just give him more stacks. Oh, that is true. So the damage not quite enough from uh, Cafferttato and the boys. Uh, now Timber Soul's gonna get rotated around again. That's gonna be the burst right coming through. He's gotta get the timber chain out, and he uses a magic wand. Bring him down. Now he's gonna get glimpsed back into this one, but they might be juked around a little bit. Disruptor's gonna be here. He was helping out with the glimpse and. 
Well, the glimpse is down, so Rubik's going to be able to stay at this lane. Doing some damage with the tower onto Runicello and Nyx Assassin is here as well. I think the Disruptor might be overstaying his welcome a little bit. There is an Impale available as well from the Nyx Assassin. Looking for it, and it just goes out to the side right there. Makes a little sideways T to take down the Disruptor. Yeah, lapse of communication there. If uh, Disruptor called out the glimpse is coming a few seconds earlier, you know, the... The two offlaners could have ran back towards where Timbersaw used to be rather than being juked by their own team's glimpse. But at the end of the day, Terra Timbersaw, or sorry, Terrorblade Terrasaw. dies in the jungle. Terrasaw, yeah, it's a mix of the two heroes. They well, fuse. Better, right? Two times the game, turn one. Darwin gets brought back into the X Torrent combo. Nyx Assassin's here as well. That Impale doesn't need to be targeted, and if he wants to try to hit the Nyx Assassin, he's not going to be able to because that spike carapace was right there. Uh, Razor does go down right after the, the Astral in prison. Uh, random Tombstone drop down. Yeah, he was being chased by the Rubik. He was going to help his mid lane, but guy got cut off and decided to try to brawl and get away at the same time. A couple heroes caught outside in the kinetic field, and the decay is doing a lot, but it's just really not going to be close to enough for the dire side to take any heroes down. And this is also giving some space over to the Timbersaw to do his Timbersaw thing and get hit by a tower. Yep. On the bright side for, for the dire though, they do have a Terror Blade who is taking that tier 1, and despite his DCs, he is leading on uh, last hits. Thinking so also not all, not all Vendetta. hopeful. There's going to be a nice throw strike to get away from the Impale. Missed spells though, yep. Well, dodged. I don't know if it was missed. Dodge. Let's say yeah. dodge. Let's be nicer a little bit. Undying is here now. He's got another tunes in 13 seconds. There's a glimpse back into the stack storm. And the connect build where there's not enough mana for it. Nice Impale on the two. Keep the Timber Saw alive for a little bit longer. He's going to Timber Chain away. Now maybe the Nyx Assassin goes down. Gets a nice spike carapace on the two because they decide to hit him. Throw a strike onto the Nyx Assassin. They want him to pay. They're going to drop down the Tombstone and maybe the uh, Timbersaw wants some of these zombies to hit him. They're going to be healing him, him up a little bit. He says, OD, please don't kill that. I need this. But no, they're just going to take it down because they might think about trying to... No, they actually just denied the tower. Or no, Terrorblade got it. I don't know what happened. So Terrorblade got the tower top, and the tower bottom was, uh, I think, just destroyed by creeps. Yeah, just destroyed by creeps. Winion. All right. Razor trying to get away from the mid lane. Kurt Vonnegut took a lot of damage, and Footsie is going to continue to keep chasing down the Razor. Brought right back in with the axe, and the front's going to be off the mark. OT is able to come in with the Astro in prison. Now he turns his sights on the Cafetada because he does know that the Razor is dead. He just turns around there. But he has some nice vision of the Radiant Jungle, and he knows that Hijack, he's just sitting here farming. Knows which one is the real Terror Blade now, and he's going to try to get him with the Astro in prison. I will get in range for the Arcane Orbs, wants to keep hitting him down. Also, that has a hammer to drop if he needs to, but I don't think he's going to have to at all for this one. Or maybe he will, just drops it down, and the Terror Blade still doesn't die. Wow, the best stun coming out of Loki57 uh, makes uh, OD have to commit his ultimate, and even still wasn't enough. So Terror Blade gets away, and the ultimate's used. That's a pretty big window of safety now without a Terror Blade ult up. What was that? Terror Blade what? ultimate? More like OD ultimate, Sorry, right? sorry, OD. You know, my words get jumbled too much. Yeah, it happens. That's one of the, the dangers of casting. You forget how to speak sometimes. Yeah, speaking is hard. Yeah, talking is with words, man. It's difficult. Oh. Timber Saw will get the top tower. However, the creep will steal the last hit from him because he does not have a high base damage. He does. He has uh, a lot of regen. Yep. So the tower won't hurt him, but unfortunately he won't hurt the tower back. Absolutely loving the warding from Soggy Mitz right now. They're getting so much vision of the dire side jungle. They're just going right through it. And with the Nyx Assassin, they can afford to go just so deep into this. Unicello doesn't have vision of the Rubik. And now, uh, Disruptor's going to be lifted up. Has a kind of feel as well. The uh, Untying Tombstone's going to be dropped down. There's going to be this way Carabase. There's a little bit of damage here. Tombstone taken out. Here comes the boat. It's going to hit right on the Capitato. They cannot afford to continue to defend this. And Soggy Mitz, they're rolling right through this. Now, maybe the Sand King taking some damage. He's going to be X back. Burst Arc up in one. Uh, OG has to hide a little bit because he is pretty low on uh, on HP. Also, the the delayed damage from Rum also continues to stick him down, but he won't yep. die from that. 
So even though he looked like under the tower at 400 health, he knew that he was going to tick down soon and he had to get out. And he just goes, gets the new rune, bottles back up, and decides to just stay mid and keep farming. Or trying to pressure the tower, most likely. Yeah, imagine that, kids. Alcohol kills. Imagine that. <laughs> imagine that. Um, OT continues to hang out on the mid lane, though. Heals a little bit thanks to the bounty room that he picked up. Nice four staff over the trees. He will be finishing off the hurricane pipe pretty soon. And look at this, a nice little double damage rune. A little pick-me-up for the OD. And it looks like they're going to hunt with it. They know some of the other heroes are mid. They have a Timber Saw sitting mid, and they have a Nyx and a Kunkka ready to scout behind the tower. Yeah, Nyx and the Vendetta. They've got the double damage rune going. There's going to be the exit. Marks the spot right into the boat. Vendetta damage as well. They've got so much right on the Razor. And uh, Astro and Prince is going to keep the Razor alive for a little bit longer, but I believe he will be... Oh, no, he hasn't died after this. He's going to be kept alive. Yeah. Now OD wants to probably turn around looking for the hammer, but it comes down just as he dies. And Nyx Assassin, he's going to be happy if he's able to... Uh, TP out, which he is able to. The zombies will furious try to chase him down, but they've got a long way to go before they get into the base. That is a huge misplay by the OD to be that greedy for a kill secure. I'm not going to call it a kill steal, but a kill secure. Because the Razor does have a wand, and if you mash that wand while you're coming out of the end prison, you can actually wand up before the damage is dealt. And he has a ranger up on top of that. So even though the 200 health Razor looks like it's a uh, secured kill and they can move on to the other targets, it just causes him to live at the end. And then, you know, they waste the spell on one hero that's not going to get punished for it. It's, yeah. a, it's a costly, costly greedy play. And they had the kill there as well. They didn't even need to ask him in prison. Oh, without a doubt. A single more right click and he would have died because he was stunned. Oh, triple man burrow strike from the Sand King. They're going to be getting three down here. Foots trying to make his way out, but Timbersaw's coming in from the backside. Uh, OG stealing some of that intelligence. Has the hammer if he wants to drop it. Tombstone's going to be there. They're going to need to focus a lot of effort trying to take him down. And the OG is going to be the one doing that. Looking for the hammer. He will drop it down, but it does basically nothing. After how to finish off by the Timbersaw. And OG, he's being chased down by a lot of Zambies. Timbersaw's going to be the one to try to deal with the Razor. And he just throws What's the shotgun way short. He was building a oh bloodstone in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, if he didn't do that, maybe he finishes the kill and gets the rampage on the razor. Anyway, uh, I was about to say. Oh no, he's gonna saw. keep going. He's oh <laughs> gonna miss God. everything. Uh, going right for Darwin. Now Darwin's gonna be stealing some damage. And well, Timbersaw tries to throw this out. Has a shotgun available. Has a machine. He's gonna get hit by it. Oh, nice thunder, keeping the razor alive and Tim. Terror Blade is just going to try to escape the scene of the crime. Now Timbersaw is silenced up. He has that. He has to deny if he needs it. He's going to try to get away from this one. Oh, he's going to try to go to the high ground, but just hit by the end of that unstable current. And Razor finally finds a kill onto that one. Actually gets himself killed there. If he waited a half second longer, the uh, Timbersaw up on the high ground would have, you know, been an escape. But since he did it too soon, the extra damage from the uh, plasma field causes the death. Also, that's kind of a dive that you see in pubs, not really in a team play game. I don't know what's going through his mind there, but that's it's a very costly death. Especially after getting an ultra kill like that. It's a big cold swing on their position one hero. Yeah, most also, definitely. Uh, don't forget that this for was a timber saw that went too safely in farm. So right. He's worth a lot. So, yeah, exactly. I was also about to say before that last fight that Timbersaw is hitting their time. You know, they're going for a great fight right here. They had three killed, and then the Timbersaw flew in and burst down the timber or the Terror Blade from half health to nothing within like a quarter of a second, just ending that like chase and dive right there and then. But both teams not too bummed with what came out of that at the end. OD is coming out alive, ultra kill on Terror, uh, Timbersaw, but also Timbersaw dying and four other heroes dying inside Saw Kimits. Very close match right now. Teams are um, pretty well matched. We've got XP close to zero. Uh, net worth is only 1,000 in favor of Soggy Mits right now. They're going to be making a push onto the mid lane, and maybe they can get something behind the tower. The vision here for the Dire isn't very good at all. I think they can catch something out, but the Central Ward is down on that lower ground. So they do need to see the Nick Assassin coming in. And we're going to have an X marks the spot on the Razor. There's going to be a bow coming in as well. Can they take this combo this time? They're going to put down the Kinetic Field, trying to zone this out, and they will take him down with the Shockrim running through. Now Timbersaw, oh, he just is going to zone them out, going for the high ground. Swims right back into the Static Storm, but they're using all their initiation onto a Timbersaw, and is he even going to go down? He's got to turn the chain out, and he will just go down to those Terra Blade hits. Now they have to back up a little bit. OD has the hammer.
but what's his intelligence doing right now? He's trying to get away. Now Kurt Vonnegut, got. I believe that was a. Oh, he's gonna get Glimpse back in. OG. He's really not seeming to be putting out too much damage right now. He's having a hard time getting up to these dire side heroes. Right, with only the Hurricane Pike, you know, no drums, no Atos, BKB, whatever other, like, tanky item you want. You're very squishy as OD. He only has a 1,200 health pool. So when, when t uh, Timbersaw is on the back lines kind of distracting all of the Team Monstro, they had Sand King doing the same thing on Team Soggy Mitts, and they cannot ignore Sand King, who's just kind of clicking at the OD, has an ult to threaten him as well with that low health pool. So both teams were kind of dealing with the one hero versus four situation. Yeah, the Sand King's doing a lot of work here. And you know, the they dropped down nearly everything on the Timbersaw, but even with that, they have just so much with all of their early game aggression that, you know, the Dire Side, they're still scary once they give up a lot of those spells onto the Timbersaw. Yep. And uh, Terrorblade's uh, almost at that peak of the 20 minute Manta style Dragonlance that I was mentioning earlier being his first big power spike. And this is at the point where OD isn't the best at dealing with those illusions quite yet. So this might be where Monstro is looking to group up, take a tower, take some, you know, early, early lead. Or mid game lead, I should say, before their, you know, strength weakens with undying Terrorblade power spike drop offs. Interesting sets of words here from the team. Uh, Dire have some nice vision of the Radiant side. Radiant, they see the the high ground in the jungle as well as the secret shop. They see a couple of players grouping up right here now. Um, Timmersaw still working on the items. He has gone for the Hood of Defiance and has his blood thrown up. Now he goes for the high ground, possibly looking for an undying kill, but he's just a little bit late to the scene of the crime. Maybe, do you think we're going to see a Roshan at any time from these teams? I believe that Monster would probably have the best chance of it once they get a, a lot of members of Soggy Mids down. Both teams actually have fine Roshan potential. You know, the, the OD with a max Arcane Orb with a pretty high mana pool can melt it with that pure damage. But likewise, you know, the pure right click out of Terror Blade. Is oh, there's a boat that. on the two as well as the torrent. They dropped down the hammer. Sand King super low. They should have a lot of damage. Herman. Here comes the Terra Blade. Just going right to the back lines. Oh, the Whirling Death will be able to finish off the Disruptor. And he comes with the right clicks. But look at the zombies. They've got only the Terra Blade to take down. But it's so difficult to do that with all these zombies slowing right now. Here comes the Timmersaw looking for the Chakram. And he's going to get the Sunder to stop Zero in his tracks. And he also misses the Timber Chain. Forced to go for the Deny. Wow. So that Wombo Combo coming out of TSM, perfect situation for them. Terra Blade coming in kind of in a 1v4 situation and didn't have enough mana for his Sunder, but the Manta style flew out to him just in time, gave him that extra bit of a mana pool to turn that around and get a, you know, two trade. Even though it was a suicide out of the Timbersaw, it is definitely more than they expected after losing four heroes for nothing. Yeah, Soggy Mist was... definitely had it there, but, you know, they... I don't know, the Tombstone seemed to just do a little bit too much work against them, you know? Oh yeah. The the Soggy Mitz Wombo Combo with that uh, Boat Chakram is just incredible amounts of damage. Well, the Terra Blades continuing to do a little bit of work, get some nice thunder. I mean, he's playing his Terra Blade match. That's probably the most we can yep. say for him. He's building up yep. his items, going to continue with that item progression. And um, when does he start to fall off? Like, when does he reach his peak, I guess? And then when are Soggy Mids able to deal with him the most? So once it's more of a he falls off because the other team is going to spike a little bit. Uh, having this Manta style Dragonlance is a big uh, spike in his potential to, you know, take an objective, take those towers. But the other team with the Timber Saw and the OD will hit their bigger spikes in the you know coming few minutes and be able to deal with his illusions and his you know low health pool pretty early, pretty easily I should say. Um, but then again, this turns around in another you know 20, 30 minutes. Who knows how long? But once they get fully slotted, a 4,000 health Terra Blade with you know five illusions is not something that they can deal with as easily as they would like, regardless of how big they are. I mean, even so, with a uh, Kunkka? Even, even with a Kunkka, because I mean, he might go BKB. If a BKB Terrorblade with like 3,000, 4,000 health and making illusions of everybody with Tombstone Zombies on everybody, 
they don't really have the best way to deal with them. And I'm sure he will go BKB eventually because, like I was just saying, Team Soggy Mitz does literally nothing when he BKBs. They can't touch him. Sort of like uh, that that one song, Can't Touch This. Exactly. That's that's what was, uh, I was that's, imagining when I said that. That's definitely what you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Zinko loves all those old songs. Well, a little bit of dewording action going on by Unichel. Taking the vision away from Soggy Mitz, and he's probably going to pay for it, but is a vision here? They're not going to see him in time to get the X. Uh, maybe they, yeah, they have the gem up, so they're going to get the dewording done. A lot of tires being taken off the map by Soggy Mitz. We're pretty much even right now, but I really would think that the Terra Blade is going to be a little bit better at pushing these lanes in. Right, but I think that early TC actually hurt him a lot more than you'd admit, even though it's only been like a minute since he de or it was only DC'd for about a minute or two. Uh, that really hurts, you know, getting that Manta Dragon Lance at 20 minutes instead of at 18 or 17 before those big fights happen. So, yes, he hasn't gotten the towers yet, but that doesn't mean that he hasn't, you know, done what he needed to do. Because once they win a single fight, don't be surprised if all of the towers go down within a minute. Sand King's still hanging and out at bottom, possibly looking for some kind of gank, but he doesn't have a whole lot of vision here unless his creeps are there, and he's kind of really out of position to be able to defend this tier 2 tower now. Yeah, he's just looking for a creep skip, but uh, a defusal coming out of the Terror Blade is not what I expected. It does provide him a lot of damage, don't get me wrong, and it provides him a nice, like, diffuse on whatever, you know, if it's a dispel or a catch. But, you know, his health pool is still only 1300 right now, and with all the magic and pure damage coming out of Team Soggy Mids, that might come back to bite him in the ass. Well, after that last fight, Monster decided that, you know, it's probably a better idea just to sack that tier 2. They will immediately smoke. Um, Timbers also going to be brought back to it with the X marks the spot and try to get back to his team as fast as possible. So now, uh, Soggy Mitz, they're going to make a, a beeline over to where they believe the enemy T is. They have a little bit of a, a vision advantage here. Razor, or oh, he might have been caught out right now. Uh, zero coming in. They're going to get the slow with the Shockman. A ton of damage. Can the Razor stay alive long enough? Absolutely not. His corpse will be, will be brought back. I don't think that was the buried treasure that he had in mind at that spot. As If he digs there now, he's probably going to be uncovering his own body. Now we'll see if somebody gets caught out inside the jungle here. Munichel is going to put down a ward or two, and well, Soggy Mitz have no idea that he's there. Oh, definitely a good gank out of Team Soggy Mitz. You know, they're getting the tier 2 tower uncontested, and then a free pick off of a Razor in the jungle on a core. It slows down Monstro's timing. But, uh, this is the point where Monstro doesn't really want to fight. They, they clearly didn't engage bottom. And they're just kind of holding out until Terrorblade gets his next item. Whether that's a BKB, whether it's a Scotty, whether whatever it is, it will almost certainly be something to help bulk him up and be able to survive these fights. In the meantime, he's just doing what a Terrorblade does best, and he's running around the map hitting things that aren't heroes. Look how fast the tower goes down. He'll get it before the five heroes from mid get to tier two. Oh yeah. Well, the Diffusal Blade definitely does give him some damage. And, you know, with Hijack pushing so fast, it might even give Soggy Mitz some food for thought, thinking that they may even have to defend the tower at bottom, because, you know, Monster, they really don't want to... As good as their high ground is, they might not even want to go for this base defense. They do have to defend. Hijack is perfectly happy doing what he's doing right now. Just look at the health difference from the Tier 3 towers. Terrorblade only just started hitting it, and it went down faster than the 5 heroes from the other side hitting it for like 5 extra seconds. And when he fades out the things, then the rest of his team will initiate on any stragglers. Yeah, they are trying to chase down the Rubik right now. Over at bottom, someone's been caught, getting caught out. We got a Terrorblade. He could go down to the... Well, he could go down to the OG right now. The BKB is going to be wearing off the Disruptor. Might be thinking about going for the OG, but he's a... He's a... Raptor man up against the big scary outhouse destroyer and man I'm not sure how much raptors stack up to outhouses but <laughs> that raptor was certainly destroyed Raptor saw head blood in his eyes you know you see a 200 health or 100 health to, uh, OD and you have to just go for it because if you die you're probably going to die anyways if you get the kill you just took out their OD as the disruptor 
But uh, I, I like the play coming out of Monstro, I just don't like the execution. You know, pushing, forcing the tier 3 and then getting back and TPing to base as your team catches the stragglers is a very common strategy with split pushers. But he just, you know, stayed a little bit too long past his welcome and paid for it. The other thing is, I don't feel like they disrupted enough TPs there. I think they just let too many members from Sagimins get back to the base. If they disable one or, or they take off two, about two TPs there, I think the story is a little bit different for Monster. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because, like, Terrorblade can man up and just fight back. He almost killed the OD there. Imagine if the Disruptor was mid using Glimpse and Static to stop the escape, meanwhile, rather than helping the Terrorblade bottom. I don't know, I think... I think they just a little bit of a flawed execution there, but... In theory, it was a good idea. Well, it ain't I guess that's being what it's cheesy doing. inside the Roche Pit. Zero's just keeping Roshan staring at him for now. But here comes the tombstone. Um, so you missed, they're getting some nice vision with the next inside the burrow. And we'll see if he's yep. able to do anything, but he missed the entail. That Kurvonica takes way too much damage. And while they all continue to make the fast, you can see play characters and he's just absolutely dead here. Um, bye bye from the one. And OG's going to initiate here. Here comes the boat. It's going to be hitting on the two inside of that stack storm. Uh, OG goes to the high ground. He needs to be dropping down his hammer sometime soon, but he's just going to be smacked down by the Undying. Drops down the hammer just as he dies. And while Zero, he's completely lost right now. Uh, just no one go going down for Monstro, and this will leave the Roshan for them to take. That, that was a great position out of the Nyx, in my opinion, but that missed stun at the very start was a very bad decision. Because that just had him, you know, be caught out 1v4 while the rest of his team was running away. If he held that for a second longer or used it earlier, it would have maybe turned out completely differently. Also, you know, just the Terrorblade hitting that second spike with that Aegis and that team fight coming out in their favor, that, like, you know, that's possibly enough to get him towards that second spike of I don't have to be afraid of anything now. And this might be enough to turn the game entirely in Monstro's favor where they'll have the control, they'll have the pressure, and Team Soggy Myths will be the one that's now scared to, you know, pressure, scared to push high ground to five. And they will be a lot more hesitant or a lot more uh, sneaky with their plays. Well, in terms of turnarounds, we're certainly seeing something like that. Sagimitz had about a 5,000 gold lead before that fight. Now that's dwindling down to about 1,000. And, uh, well, Monster, like you said, they are starting to get into their second wind as they're trying to get through this game. Um, Kunkka is going to be getting a little bit more damage up against the Terrible. He's making his way towards the armlet soon, so he's going to have a little bit more of a say against these illusions that he'll be having. And um, OD, he should be getting closer to his uh, Shiva's guard as well. So they have very, a couple of tools. Very for... questionable item build coming out of the Kunkka. Brown boots into a blink and then going back for the armlet. It's it's just odd to me because they don't really need the blink axe mark to initiate the fights in my opinion. And the brown boots blink makes it so he can't farm now. He can't get that armlet as fast as he could have gone, you know, armlet and then blink with that extra armlet farming speed and fighting power. But at the end of the day, they did have that early game advantage that they wanted. They just didn't, you know, execute as nicely with that mid push or that Roche fight right there and they're gonna be punished for it and they're gonna have to double down now. Double down for the armlet, double down for the for the next opportunity that they have with the next set of items. <coughs> well, he's trying to farm up to get as fast to get to that uh, ship as guard as soon as he can. Um, Right now, it just seems like Soggy Mints are just really between items that they absolutely have to get before the next fight. And when they do get there still, they won't have buyback, which might be absolutely integral if Monster come, on, come up on top of this one. Yeah, it's the, it's the price they pay for losing those past two engagements. You know, they don't have the privilege now to save buyback or whatever. They need the better items to take any sort of fight that they can get. But it doesn't look like they're going to be given the time to do so. Back into the base. Here comes the push from the Terrorblade Illusions. There are lots of ways to take care of these Kunkas. Well, he's got his armlet finished up for this push, but for buybacks, only the Sand King has it up right now. No one on the Radiant. With the tower being so low, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Monstro is content to sending Illusions at it, but as I say that, they just full commit for it through backdoor for no reason. 
It doesn't seem like the best idea. Um, no. Nope. Like used by the Terra Blade, and they're forced away from this. They will be taking the tower down with those illusions. Uh, just about there. Uh, Terra Blade still has the agency. He's going to get the Thunder off onto the Kunkka. That big damage is going to be done trying to armor toggle out of this one, but Footsie, yeah, he's not going to be able to get that. Uh, Loki, inside of that bro uh, status, and he will end up going down now. Now little Rubik metamorphosis. Oh, uh, he doesn't do as much damage as the big Terra Blade. Jankings ends up getting taken down. Jankings will be silencing a couple of heroes. LT cannot stand there for too long. And this full set of racks, it's in a lot of trouble. Terra Blade just takes it down so quickly. Uh, that initiation. Yeah. That initiation went from awful to incredible with the uh, multiple saves on the Terra Blade into a uh, full health Sunder on a Kunkka. Yeah, and he's still got the Aegis. He didn't even yeah, use and he still has the Aegis on top. They're perfectly content with losing a Sand King when they get melee racks, a tier 3 tower, and 3 kills out of it. Any day of the week. I'm trying to see if the Terrorblade Illusion is going to steal any farm away from the Timbersaw there, but now he just gets very angry and just chains him in the face. Also off of that, it gets uh, Terrorblade a little bit closer to his next item. He has... 3.4k gold left. I thought he had more earlier. Did he spend it on something without me noticing? I don't know. But regardless, after that Aegis expires, he will be able to... Oh, he got a Hurricane Pike. That's what he spent it on. Hits him a little bit of extra mobility. It's good pickup. Yeah, mobility and survivability is the name of the game for Terrorblade. Terrasol. Timber... Timberblade. Timberblade. XD. Alright. So, looks like a team of Monstros looking just to do the same thing again. March down waves, get the tier 2s down, and then just commit for a high ground siege when they have the next metamorphosis. They did just lose their Aegis, but I don't think that's going to dissuade them. Well, he's going to be trying to do everything he can to slow this push down. And, you know, they they are pushing the waves out pretty far. Even with those super melee creeps going down bottom, the wave is pretty pushed out. It's already pushed out near the secret shop of the Dire. With the illusion helping it out, though, they're not too worried about it. As long as there's no hero from Soggy Mitz over in that area, it will naturally be pushed back. back. Push back to see the tombstone drop down, and Oji just has to stand up and try to get it. But the static link goes through this, and uh, Oji forced to back away from it. Over inside the secret shop, uh, Nick's assassin trying to go ham up against the same king. If they can take him out of the fight, um, it might be okay, but they're not going to be able to do that, as the timber saw is going to be the first one to fall in this fight. And, well, they dropped a lot for it. Timbersaw still has buyback, but these illusions are going absolutely ham on the towers and the creeps. Yeah, Timber Terror Blade is fine using his metamorphosis for a fight like that because they're so close to getting objectives off of it, they can get the tier 2 and a tier 3 immediately after. If they were having the fight on their side of the map, that would have been a little bit more punishing, but at the end of the day, if they force a buyback or if they get the tier 3, they're happy. Sand King doing some work here, stunning up the OG. There's a nice thunder getting the OG very low. Uh, four staff forward from the OG, uh, Terror Blade, forcing out the Hurricane Pike and looking how huge he is. Uh, OG put right back into his drop down the hammer. He's going to go into an immediate buyback, trying to take down Terror Blade. He doesn't have an Aegis right now. That did expire. But yep, OG's just going to go for another BKB around from the side. We'll stun out the Razor, and I believe he has died right now. Looking for another one. X marks the spot on the Cafertado. Looking for that next kill. He's going to leave it for OG. Trying to slow him down with the Shivus Guard. We'll be able to hit that. And they do take him down, getting the Gem of True Sight on the ground. Unfortunately, Kunkka not finding anything else on the other side of this one. But he's going to keep going forward, seeing if he can pick someone off. But he's going to stop a little bit short of the Terra Blade. And I think it is time for Soggy Mist to make that foray outside of their base and try to push down the mid lane. It, this really is a Hail Mary type of play right though, uh, right now, though. Because with the Terror Blade now having a BKB, that was the other item that he bought with all that money. Um, you know, he'll be back in fighting shape in about 10, 20 seconds, and they will not be able to get anything too big off of that in that time. And Soggy Mitz recognizes this. Yeah, it doesn't even take a buyback to force him back. They're just going to go nope. right, right away. Yeah, if they get if they get Blink Sand King stunned into a Terror Blade ready to fight, there's not too much they can do. They use their alts, they use their BKBs as well. And Rubik's also absolutely struggling to try to clear out these creeps at bottom. He's trying to defend that range tracks as best as he can, but it's just super difficult when you are an underleveled support against the super creeps. Right.
And OD having buyback penalty, or I guess that ran out now, but he does not have buyback for the next engagement. They do not want to force anything too crazy with that mid push. So now it's a very, very scary game for Team Soggy Mids here. A single mistake from OD, no buyback on OD for a two minute death penalty. That's enough for Terrorblade to take the entirety of Soggy Mids' base. Yeah, they absolutely have to be careful of the physical damage. Luckily, Roshan's not going to be respawning for a little bit more than a minute right now. So the timing for Monster is going to be a little bit delayed as they're waiting for the Aegis. But I'm not sure how much help it's actually going to give over to Soggy Mids because this, the timer is still there. Um, they will have a hammer for this next fight. All the ultimates are going to be up, but we haven't really made too much of an uh, of an item progression since the last fight and you really don't have that much more to offer if you're soggy mitts I guess your only hope is that you try to get a better fight yeah hope that the other team makes a mistake hope that the other team sieges incorrectly or you know doubles down for a Roshan and is too grouped up for a bow combo hammer drop from OD that's the, they're they're probably at the point where they're not going to win through their outplay, they're going to win through Monstro outplaying themselves. And unfortunately, due to those last few fights and just due to the sheer nature of playing against the uh, Terror Blade, that's how the game is now. No fault of their own, they they just missed their last fine timing in one or two fights. So I guess it is a fault of their own, but the hey. situation they're in now, <laughs> but the situation they're in now, I'm saying, they they have very little control over as opposed to what they did 10 20 minutes ago there is a little bit of a push going in top but soggy mids they're just really cautious right now they have to defend their own base but with the tier 2 already being down they have to be very afraid of going getting the full mega creeps against them but again it is going to take a little bit longer they're going to have illusions pushing in but this just creates enough space for monstro to go for roshan yep Team Sogimus just has no way to hit buildings. OD does all of his damage with the orb, that's for like heroes and units. Ter uh, Timbersaw does the same thing, all for, you know, unit damage. They just, even if they win a fight, they're not gonna take too much off of it. They might take one set of racks at most. Sogimus is a little bit disorganized right now. Monster's not deciding to go for the Roshan just yet, just need to clear out the creep waves. They don't want to get pushed in too much. They've got a terrible illusion top, they've got the Sand King clearing out mid, and these creeps are going to start going on to the Radiant side a lot, so uh, Monstro, they'll group up, They're possibly looking for a smoke uh, soon. It, it is on the Disruptor. And uh, Sand King is still pushing down mid. These creeps are going to be knocking on the door of that tier 3 tower pretty soon. Yep. And with the threat of Terrorblade being off the map right now, they don't know if he's waiting to ramp mid or if he's doing Roshan right now, so they're panicking. They they need to defend mid, they need to defend the Rosh area, and they do so with an X-Marks the spot. That makes sense. Yeah, luckily they do have that to push out the lanes. A very good tool here. Uh, Unfortunately, it only works once, because the 50 second cooldown on the OD, they have to send Terrorblade or Timbersaw back to defend, and that kind of gimps their potential to contest Roshan. Something that immediately uh, Monstro go into that pit and Timberblade. Timber, <laughs> Timberblade. I, yes, I'm sorry, I called You're this. rubbing off on me. This is. I think he's fired now, guys. Um, oh. Monstro, they go into the pit. They will take down Roshan extremely quickly. Uh, Terribly doesn't. Excuse me, doesn't look like he's making a spot for this. So they put the Aegis onto the Razor. And this tanky Razor is going to have two lives here. He's almost as good as a cat. As good as a cat right now. Uh, I don't think Terrorblade really needs to worry about dying. With If he plays the BKB, Scotty, Manta, and Sunder correctly, he should be more than fine giving the Aegis off to another one of his teammates. Uh, we'll see if that's going to work out for them. And Terrorblade might have been caught out. He's very low on mana right now. He can't really keep you away either. Oh no, it's the double glimpse! Uh, Terrorblade goes through the Timber Chain to try to get out, and he will be able to make it. Wow. Wow. I... Sand King using his stun on the creeps rather than waiting for the uh, Terra Timber Saw that walked right by their entire team was unfortunate. Terra Timber Saw. Man, the Terra is... Timber Saw. Can we just there, I... take that hero out of the game? 
Yeah, both of them. Both of them just gone. I'm Can we fine. just make them leave? That'll probably make things a lot better. Kurt getting very aggressive over here at top. I'm not really sure why he was that far out. Possibly just looking for some wards while the other, while the rest of the Monstro team was still on their side of the map. But he noticed that and ran away immediately. The guy that has a name that starts with T, he's going to be trying to go for some creep cutting over at top. But he's going to run right <laughs> into the other side, and he's still going to wait. He's away. Now he's going to get smacked right in to the kinetic field and the stack storm. The buyback does. He also has the, the suicide if he needs to. Shocker is really essential for the push out of the base, and uh, again, the Lotus Orb doing some work on that Burrow Strike. But he is does he really push pushing his luck. He is really pushing his luck, walking to where he knows five heroes just were, just to make some space. I mean, I guess you could call that making space, but at the end of the day, he's losing money, XP, and time. And buying time is nice, but it's not enough. He's just forcing his own buyback for next to no reason. Yeah, and it's super difficult to take down these illusions. He absolutely has to back, buy back right now. Um, yeah. The damage is pretty high on these uh, racks, and he really has to defend these buildings. Now he's going to buy back as Rubik's already getting taken down by the first strike. Buy back from the Rubik getting back in this one. Static, uh, static Link onto the, the OG, taking him down very low, taking a lot of damage over to the Razor, and they've taken one set of racks. Terrorblade, he really just wants that one. Standing in the middle of the shock room. Can they take him down? He doesn't have the Aegis, remember, and he will actually die to this one. Timbersaw takes him out with that, and look at that. It's going to be the Thunder Strike uh, stolen by the Rubik. Disruptor hit with the double shock room. Doing some actual work here. They've already lost the full set of racks, but they take down a pretty big kill on the Terror Blade. Unfortunately, he still has buyback, and well, he's not down for that long either. Monstro will be annoyed with that play. The Terror Blade just got chain locked or chain stunned under the chakrams but you know at the end of the day like you said they still have buyback and they got racks so they'll be more than happy waiting these 40 seconds just march down mid and ending the game against the team that does not have buyback the razor might have been found out double chakram coming in that's gonna be a lot of damage and they do get enough that's just the ages so will monster decide to initiate off of this can uh so you just go back to me nice first step away and they cannot go for that razor any longer not enough to um, this. Great pickoff. If they could have followed up and killed Razor again, that would have been absolutely huge with their, you know, position in the game. But, you know, in the end of the day, once again, they lose. Monstro is feeding a lot of unnecessary deaths, unnecessarily kills, unnecessary positions. But they're still in the commanding role of this game. They will walk down mid with five, and TSM is going to be once again on the hind foot, forced to react to the Monstro's. Monstro's end game death push here. Yeah, that's what we call aggression around my parts. Um, <laughs> Furtado with the gem again. So he's going to get some de-warring down. Sagamin's trying to get some vision on the map, but it's really just not working out right now. And, you know, vision that deep, it's probably not going to help them out that much anyway. Maybe they try to go for a gank or something, but, you know, it's just really difficult to get out of the base against the Monstro squad. The squad that's really just going to be pushing down, down the lanes for most of the rest of the game now. So Monstro is actually yeah, looking for the smoke gank before the the death push. The soggy mids was expecting the death push or the smoke gank. Who knows? But regardless, they're in their base because there's not much else they can or should be doing. Yeah. At this point, all it takes is one pick off, and TSM is out. And recognizing this, TSM is going for the aggressive play, going for the fight when Monstro is not quite ready for it is their best hope. Monstro because Monstro is... Unfortunately, yeah. They aren't split up. And Sagimits are actually going to miss them. They're coming around from the side now. They're a little bit disorganized. Footsie's going to get his smoke broken. And Monstro, they don't see them on the high ground. They're actually going to push a little bit further in here. They will walk under the ward at some point. And his smoke house is broken. This is going to be going up. And the vision, it is here for Monstro. Actually, going to go onto the same king and he uses the BKB. Goes right for the tip off call. He's going to go ham in here. OG has to do some work. They're going to take care of the uh, disruptor a little bit. But I think that's going to be all she wrote for 
Uh, Zagi meds, but he's taking too much damage, trying to back away. OD is dead. He has his buyback. He's going to be getting into this one. This one. The zombies are chasing down Kurt. Four staffs away from this one, but I don't think he has the damage to take care of it. But the timber saw doing some absolute damage. Here it comes. OD gets stunned, and he's put into the Astron prison. Nyx Assassin has to come up big with the suns right now. And OD cannot get away from the Terra Blade. Timbersaw has to do it right now. Comes in with the one shock. Him. There's gonna be a stun. Can they take him down? They do! They're gonna go right for the Sand King now. He is the lone member surviving right now for Monstro, and they absolutely have to get him down. Looking for the stun. Sand King jukes away from it, gets the blink over. It's a four for two. The OD's down for a while. Creeps are pushing in top. What is going on? Oh, they actually do end up getting him. Sand King, that's an ultra kill for Timbersaw. He ends up taking him down. All inside the jungle, all in the top lane, and now he has to just defend the base. That was incredible. Wow. I expected uh, the full health, full ability cooldown Terror Blade to be able to do a lot more, but the second his BKB ran out and the OD bought back, drained all of his mana, and Timbersaw was just ready to, you know, double chakram him. The, the Timbersaw and Nyx did so much work that fight, it was kind of unexpected, but at the same time, this is what I was talking about with the Ox coming out for pretty much both of the teams. Ox Nyx, Ox Timbersaw is too much damage to deal with if you don't have a BKB up. Yeah, that's that's why they get a miss in the game. It can definitely turn things in your favor. Undying now has to push out the mid lane. Look at all those Zambies. Uh, the creeps are really <laughs> angry at them, but <laughs> and it's a huge battle here. It's just they keep spawning. It's really annoying for the creeps to have to try to play against this and Razor finally comes in with the unstable uh, with the what do you call that? Plasma field? To Plasma, the yeah. Finally. yeah. So with the buybacks being used, though, I think Monstro is just going to do the same thing again. You know, if it doesn't work once, you got to just, you know, go until it does, right? That's how Dota works, I'm sure. Yeah, and but, it's uh, it's so difficult right now for Saki Mist to push into the Dire Base because those buyback are, buybacks are still up. And, you know, if they go in with their buybacks being down... It could definitely mean a lot of peril for the Radiant side. Terror Blade, super tanky right now, 2,700 health on him. And I believe he's 6-slotted right now. I guess he could get yep. a little bit more with the extra courier or something. That's or a 7-slot slot Mochard. Yeah. You know, the it. the entirety of Team Soggy Mets does not have buyback right now. And I'm sure if Monstro realized this, they could just send bodies at mid, take another kind of iffy fight, but then just have a timber, uh, Terror Blade buyback bots. Like, they could just do this as a sort of 6v5, and knowing that the other team doesn't have buyback, force the end of the game. But they're going to be a little more cautious. They don't want their tournament life to be on the line due to a little bit of, you know, unnecessary greed. And they might just wait out the next Roshan. Monstro had a possibility of getting caught out there, but there was a vision that they needed to be able to stay away from that gank. And there, the Terror Blade also wasn't there, so it possibly could have spelled a lot of danger for Monstro. But um, Soggy Mist just unable to work with that vision, and uh, well, their gank attempt isn't going to work. They were getting a little bit close there. At this point, I if Soggy Mist end up dying or get ganked, they lose one or two members, it could be Monstro going in for the Megas. But, well... Things are a little bit more complicated for Soggy Mits. They have to take a little bit more than a big team fight in order to win this one. Right. Because they don't have the way to, you know, instantly take the base of the other team like Mantro does. Like the Terror Blade just inherently offers in a draft. Timbersaw is pretty good for taking down creeps, but in terms of hitting towers, he can basically just tank it. There's not really a whole lot else that he can do here. Yeah, even, even when Monstro gets the Mega Creeps, if they do get the Mega Creeps, if this game goes in that direction, the Terror, the, sorry, the Timber Saw and the Nyx with an Ags and the OD's Orb, even though he attacks one at a time, he does a lot of damage, they can hold off if they need to. If, you know, they they have one last Hail Mary hoorah down mid, it is not just game over the second that the Megas are gotten. Oh, well, we've got a lot of dancing around this match. Uh, Terrorblade's still at the top of the net worth. He's, well, he hasn't bought up that next Moon Shard yet. Um, but surely he is going to be thinking about it. He is 5,100 surplus after that buyback. So I would think that he's going to be picking up that attack speed item pretty soon. But there's, it just means that if they get a hero caught out, they're going to die a little bit faster. When he pops that BKB, he's going to be doing some more damage. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be able to stay, stay alive throughout the fight some more.
Right. I think a refresher in the base would actually be his next go-to item if he's thinking along the same lines I am. Because if he dies and has a moon shard, there's not much too much he can do. He'll buy back TPN, but he won't have his blacking bar, he won't have his manta, he won't have his metamorphosis, and he might not have his thunder. If he buys back, you know, pops that uh, refresher orb, TPs in with an unexpected second metamorphosis thunder BKB, uh, there's not too much Soggy Mist can do to deal with that. They don't have the physical damage to, you know kill a BKB second life terribly. And yeah, that's what he went. He went for a refresher orb and he actually bought his own courier and flying courier to ferry it around. I don't know if that's necessarily the right play, but it's the one that he's doing. Yeah, that's how you take one for the team. Get your own courier. Um, Kunku gets the action. He's just going to X himself back. A little bit too scared of the enemy team. Not even putting down um, not even putting down the damage with the Tidebringer. Um, Roshan has now respawned. The a Tombstone on the high ground. Now with it down, Sagamus might have a way to get into this fight, but they have to know that it's there. And the Courier dives through the creeps. That's, yep. that's the Refresher down. That's what I was saying. You know, if he leaves it in base, he could just TP back to base, Refresher, and TP back into the fight if he needed. Or if he dies, he could tie back and have it ready. If he flies it around, he's at risk of losing the item. And... Now he's three minutes without that possibility. Oh, Disruptors into the Hex. If he gets taken down here, it's a huge kill for Saki Mitz, and he will be taken down. Yeah. This is this is very throwy from the side of Monstro. Well, they do have the uh, Terrorblade Illusion pushing down mid, so they have to go back and defend it a little bit. The Terror Timbersaw... Jesus. He's getting back X back into this one. And I'm dying very far up. They're going to buy back for the Roshan defense, and... That'll mean that Soggy Mist have to get away. Maybe they can pick someone off here, but the person leading the charge inside the lane, that was Razor, very tanky. And uh, they really can't afford to go for the Roche right now. Timbersaw running in with that Lotus Orb going. Maybe he catches someone out here, but he might just take him down very quickly. He's gonna hex up the, just the Undying. He's doing a lot of damage to him. Oh no, he Timber chains away from the Epicenter, but now he will burst right, getting some more damage down. Timbersaw has to get out. That's gonna get the BKB from Sand King. Oh, uh, Soggy Mist there, trying to back away from it right now. And they pick up the Nyx Assassin, glimpse back into this one. The BKBs are gonna be wearing off. Let's see if they can do some damage after this one. OD inside the trees. Can he stand his ground? He's gonna be taking a lot of physical damage from the Terror Blade, and he needs to ask to imprison himself to get away. Oh, Terror Blade comes with a blink, whirling death. He's be putting out some big damage. There's a hammer being dropped. Oh, Soggy Mist doing a little bit of damage right now. Can they do enough with this Terror Blade? He's been the story of this entire match, and, uh, well, he's going to be standing strong up against Cafritado. Looking for the Disruptor, will be able to get him with the Whirling Death, and Cafritado will be able to get away from the, the Timber Saw. Now on the other side of the fight, uh, Sand King doing some work, looking for the... Oh, they get the Razor in the middle of the trees. Terror Blade is down, and Cafritado, he is all on his lonesome, and he's going to be going down as well. Monstro, they had so much going for them, and Cafritado, all he wants to do right now is take up the time of the Radiant side as Rubik goes back into the base defend den defending from the creeps, and they're doing so much damage to him. They are doing some work on the tier 4s, and the problem for Soggy Mitz again is they just cannot do enough damage to the buildings that they have to go back and defend. Right, and even if they could go and do damage to the buildings, there are buybacks available on all, uh, I guess, three of the four. Disruptor already used one. Um, which I find very strange. They keep losing these fights because they refuse to buy back. Like, there are multiple fights where Terrorblade died pretty early and just didn't buy back TP boots. And on the other side, you know, you have the Nyx dying back, you have the OD dying back. And I think they've both bought back, like, three to four times each. But that's winning the fights. That's why Monstro isn't able to close out this game, is because it's a 7v5 at the end of the day when they buy back TP boots and Terrorblade and Razor are not. Um... Yes, it's a little bit more risky to buy back TP, but, you know, if he had the Refresher Orb in the shop rather than on a second courier, he could have done it without hesitation and, you know, maybe win that fight. This is just a, a very questionable decision from both from both teams. Well, Timbersaw is going to get that 7th slot as he does pick up the Moon Shard here. And... Timbersaw know, Moon Shard? I mean, he may as well get it if he has the gold for yeah. it. Yeah, they gotta push base somehow, right? 130 <laughs> Yeah, especially when he's the only one staying alive after these fights. Um, yeah. He's going to scout out the Roshan. Footsie's still working on the damage. He's picked up the little crits. Little crits. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he might get caught out here, though. He needs to be careful with the X. 
This net worth of the Disruptor is quite something. He only has Arcane Boots 58 minutes into a game. Oh, he's put a lot of words out on the map. That's been a really yeah. good game. Smoking the Roche Pit for Monstro. He should be taking it down fairly quickly. And the Vision isn't really here for Soggy Mitz at all. They could scan right now, but they're not going to see it. But let's see if they can go into the pit. They don't know that they're in there. Loki's ready to go in, and they're going to come in for the burrow. Here comes the Timber Saw right into the pit. They're going to get a beautiful stun on the two. Both coming through. Rage is completely cleaned up, and the Terror Blade completely out of this fight as well. The buyback's available, but he's not willing to use it right now. And Undying, oh, he's going to go down on the high ground, and the Disruptor chased down relentlessly by the OD. They'll take down four around the Roche Pit, and this would be the Aegis and Cheese for Soggy Mist if they want to go for it. They know that the buybacks are up. It's probably the best thing that they can do if they can take down the Roshan. Everyone but the Disruptor's buyback is available. And while well, OD chooses the wrong side to go for the Tombstone, luckily it's going to despawn right now and the Roshan will belong to Team Soggy Mitz as the terrible... The, t the guy that starts with T and is on the Timber radiant off. side, he goes for the Rax because he's just awesome like that. This is incredible. What a throw from Monstro and they still refuse to buy back. OD's got the Aegis, Cheese goes on to Nyx Assassin, it might be a base push for Soggy Mist, they've got to get the personnel here into the mid lane though. Timbersaw, he's here while the Terror Blade still hasn't bought back, so you got to save it sometimes there. Double Burrow Strike, stun onto the Rubik and Kunkka. Razor, he's going to get the Impale into the face, the boat will be running him over. Have you been run over by a boat before? You might want to get some of that boat run over insurance as Team Soggy Mist goes right for the mid lane. Why is this Terror Blade not buying back? That's going to be a Rax going the way of Soggy Mist. The Fortify comes out. Terror Blade's going to be alive. Can they finish this off? Looks like they can. Timbersaw's going to take that Melee Rax, and they're going to get the ranged as well. Terror Blade, he's respawning right now. His buyback's still up. This might be the last stand for Monstro, but the personnel really just isn't here. Smoke is going to be used in a last ditch effort, but I really don't even think it should have come to this, but... That's all hindsight now as we look at Team Soggy Mitz getting their second racks of the game at the center. Um, there's going to be a stun onto the Rubik and he will get the Astral in prison. Staying alive right now. Jumps back onto the Timber Cell. He really just wants to go back to hitting the racks anyway. The boat will run over the Disruptor and OD comes in, takes one hit, takes the kill and there's going to be another one down. They've got the Undying respawning in 30 seconds. Timber Cell has to go back to base. Going back to the creep wave, but he's going to be X back into it anyway, taking the care of the creeps very quickly with the double chakram. And, uh, well, I guess Saki Mitz, it's time for them to go for the Megas because they don't believe that they can go for the tier fours right now. Dimbersol back in tip top shape, and he's going to be making his way over to the top tower with that uh, moon shard. Doing some real work here. Double burrow strikes done, but he's going to get rewarded with um, Hex and the Sand King. He has that buyback anyway, just trying to stall Saki Mitz. This is incredible because uh, Terror Blade was in a very sticky position. He had about 20 seconds left on his metamorphosis. So oh, even hold if he that thought. Terror Blade comes right into yep. this one. He's got the BKB going. Outwards of our trying to stand strong. He's got the hammer available. They need to take down the tombstone, and they will. But that's just the Aegis and uh, Terror Blade doing so much work, but the Timbersaw might be doing more. Just with the sword of the special, really keeping his team into it. They're going to get the Astro in prison onto the Terror Blade immediately after the Sunder, and now they've got their chance. OD has to force staff himself away from the Razor, and Razor's going to be chasing him down for the rest of the team. They're going for the Terror Blade. He's X'd up. He is deaded up. He's still got the buyback, and OD hasn't quite gone down. Let's see where he is. He's getting taken down by the Razor, and Razor, he's just in the middle of a whole lot of hurt right now. In the middle of two Shockrams, activating the both will bring him down. He doesn't have buyback anymore. Anymore. It's just a Terror Blade and a Disruptor, and they're going to have to hold their own against the world. Buyback from the OD. He's got the re right idea. He knows that this is the chance for Soggy Mitz. Link forward by Terror Blade, or uh, Timber Cell on the Terror Blade. TT on the whatever. I don't know what's going on. They take down the Disruptor. It is only the Terror Blade now, and he's going to BKB TP over to the top lane, and he's going to be immediately met by the Terror Blade and the Cheese. I don't know. Timber Heroes off. hitting each other. <laughs> Saw blades, energy stuff. I don't know what's going on. Terror blade turned into a pig. Now Rubik. He's going to steal the uh, the conjure image. That's some illusions of Rubik. I guess that's okay. And there's not a sunder off. Kurt Vonnegut stays alive. And I believe. Uh, I don't think an Undying is going to be able to defend this. OD, nope. as little damage as he does, he's going to be doing some work here against the towers. And I believe that Saki Mitz might have just stamped their ticket into the semifinals of the Boston oh, wow. Open Qualifier. They bring this one back. 
from the depths of hell to come back and win against Monstro. They're going to the semifinals into the best of threes. Wow. That's all I can say. There is such throws, such bad decisions, such bad plays at the end of that game coming out of Monstro that they... They, they they didn't do anything right in the past 10 minutes. You know, they didn't use the buybacks when they needed to, even though it was a rough situation where they had like 30 seconds cooldown on the metamorphosis, 30 seconds on the BKB. By being that greedy and forcing your like weight on that, they're losing their base. And then his, his micro trying to get the refresher orb off at the very end, he was standing in fountain for about like 10, 20 seconds. And then after he did it, he just, you know, the refresher orb was sitting on the ground and Timbersaw goes over and hits it. <laughs> That was that was quite something. Well, that was quite something, but we have a lot more quite somethings coming up as we move on to the semifinals of the Boston Major Open Qualifier. So we'll try to get there as fast as possible, guys. Stick around. We'll have more Dota coming at you in just a few moments. Stay classy, guys. <laughs> 